So time now for another look at the morning's papers. Here with me today are Cindy Yu from The Spectator and the broadcaster and commentator Alex Andreu. So welcome back to both of you. Um, we've talked a lot about Tory plots in the last hour. Um, this time we're turning our attention back to Frank Hester, who's obviously been at the centre of a racism row this week, the Tory donor. Um, the Guardian has a new take on this, Cindy. Um, they are saying there are calls for him to lose NHS contracts. So, so fill us in on where those calls are coming from. Yeah, absolutely. So his company, Phoenix Partnership, has had around £400 million of contracts with the NHS since 2016. So it's a lot of money. It's one of the main providers of software for GPs and hospitals. Um, but the Guardian is reporting that health care uh, unions have basically voted to say that he should be kind of deprived of those contracts, that his company shouldn't have those because of the comments that he has made. Uh, leaders in hospital trusts have to follow this kind of fit and proper persons guideline that includes not being racist, not being sexist. And they're saying that that, that kind of test should be applying to private contractors like Frank Hester as well. I'm not really sure if this has much, you know, place to go in terms of this actual call. You know, GPs themselves decide what mm. software they're going to use. So if they like Frank Hester's software, they're going to continue using that. Um, as for the recourse for returning money, I mean, the Conservative Party may have already started spending that money from last year because it is an election year. So I think the story is going to rumble on because Frank Hester's comments were so abhorrent. But at the same time, it's not clear that actually his, he will lose the contracts or that the money will be returned. Well, that's right. And, and Labour in the meantime calling for that £10 million that we know about that's been donated to the Tory party to be given back and also asking questions about um, this f extra £5 million that apparently has also been pledged. It's yet to be formally revealed because it doesn't have to be yeah. for a few months. And they're also asking questions, aren't they, about these contracts? This is in the Daily Mirror. Yeah, and, and the angle here is that I guess the software is not very good. That's, the That's what we're treating the, as The saying, bottom line is, yes, that there, there are a lot of issues with the software, which hints at the only reason for this contract being awarded is that, you know, he's a, a sort of friend of the to Tories. Um, I, I do think we need a more general conversation around that kind of funding. And, and it is strange that we're not having it. It should be a cross-party point of agreement. Uh, you know, uh, conservative commentators are always very eager to exaggerate Labour's links to unions, you know, calling them union paymasters. But when it comes to a private individual giving over very large amounts of money, we're expected to believe that it's just handed over with no strings attached. And both of those positions don't make sense to me. I suspect the truth is somewhere in the middle. When organizations or individuals hand over large amounts of money, they do so in order to have some influence. And we just need to be adults about it and say, how do we police that? How do we check that that, the, that influence is not undue, as it were? Do you think that there is likely to be a conversation about that? Or are political parties uh, wary of frightening off donors that have, have helped support them? And so yeah. it's like, they're uncomfortable with the conversation? I think it's unlikely because Frank Hester with, with £10 million is the Conservative Party's top donor at the moment and so the Conservative Party is like, unlikely to, shake, uh, to rock the boat on the other donors. And the Labour Party is unlikely to turn the scrutiny onto itself, which by the way, you know, if the situation was reversed, I was talking to a former Labour advisor earlier in the week and he was saying Labour wouldn't give back the money if the, if the situation yeah. were... I mean, obviously that's conjecture but um, Alex is right, there is a question around political funding and in some ways the UK democratic system makes this worse because we have so little money flowing around that mm. when someone comes comes around with a checkbook, they are lauded much more than they would be in other democratic systems where there's just more money floating around, more fundraising. You know, we're talking about £10 million here. This kind of money will be laughed at in American politics, yes, for example, true. where the election campaigns go for much more, many more months. Yeah, so in some ways it's a sign of, you know, money not buying out of politics, but in other ways it does mean that parties are chasing that kind of check much more. And, and with, with the tax on the company, I was looking to see if there was a rush reply because normally the company would come out and put a statement out. All I can see at the moment from my quick scanning um, is that um, they have put out Frank Hester's own comments about what he'd said about Diane yeah. Abbott. Frank Hester accepts that he was...
to Diane Abbott in a private meeting several years ago, but his criticism had nothing to do with her gender nor colour yeah. of skin. Uh, Frank abhors racism, and he and they go on to say that he, he rang Diane Abbott twice Which to I try to apologise directly like. for the hurt. I don't like this this constant mentioning that I try to apologise to her twice, but she's not picking up the phone. You know, it's someone about whom you've said the sort of things that he's reported to have said owes you no obligation to pick up the phone and make you feel better about it, especially when they've reported you to the police. So this constant, oh, I tried to apologize mm. twice, but she wasn't answering my calls, seems to me a little bit shifting the blame back on Diane Abbott. Yeah, and there's a real question over whether or not the apology is right. You know, he's saying that he was rude, but denies that it's to do with race or, or skin color, or to do with race or gender. But if you read the details in full, the, the, the comments that he's alleged to have made, you know, <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty linked to her skin colour and her, and her gender. Yeah, and, and also, um, yeah, not to mention uh, calling for violence or yeah. right, absolutely. That's the other issue as yeah. well, isn't it? Um, let's move to the front page of the Financial Times, shall we? And and this is more about this journey that Boris Johnson has apparently made to Venezuela. So what's the latest twist that the FT's reporting? Yeah, so this is a bizarre story. Um, it first came out about a week ago when journalists realised that actually Boris Johnson had gone to Venezuela in February on a visit where he, the Foreign Office did know about it, but people didn't know what the the details were, was he on some kind of diplomatic back channel that Rishi Sunak had asked him for, having roped in David Cameron, another former prime minister, or was he just totally freelancing? And Boris Johnson has been a critic of Venezuela throughout his political career, so why was he going at all? This is a country the UK has no diplomatic relations with. Now we find out that a former JP Morgan banker, who is now managing his own hedge fund, was the middleman for this meeting between President Maduro and Boris Johnson. More questions are raised. I'm trying to explain the story the best I can. But it seems like uh, this former JP Morgan banker helped broker the meeting, um, has been boasting about it to his friends privately, um, but saying that he likes to stay out of the spotlight. The Foreign Office is at, is at pains to say we didn't ask him to go, although we didn't know about it at some point. Uh, and Boris Johnson is saying, you know, I was doing it for the country. A lot of questions are being raised over what exactly is going on here. Yeah, exactly. We'll have to watch this space, won't we, and see if yeah. we get any more, more details on that. I think we're pretty much out of time. Um, there's a story on the front of the Express about um, pensioners and what um, Jeremy Hunt has to say, but I think we haven't got time to squeeze that in, I'm afraid, Alex. Next. But you will come back next hour, won't you? Yeah. So there's, uh, that's like a, a, a tease. Yes. Stay with us. <laughs> Join us again in, in the next hour. Uh, for the moment, Cindy and Alex, thanks very much indeed. See you later, and uh, we'll be back in a moment with the top stories. Thank you.